Windows 10 has launched about a month ago already, but from what I read online, most people still seem to be stuck with the idea that it is just RT all over again, and therefore it is doomed to fail. And I don't agree. I'm Martin from TechAltar, you're watching the 20th episode of the Story Behind series, and here's why I think Windows 10 S will be the future of Windows, at least for some people. It is not difficult to see why many people would call Windows 10 S the new RT. After all, the defining characteristic of both operating systems is that users can only install apps from the Windows Store. But what most people don't seem to realize is that in every other way, Windows 10 S is already significantly better than RT ever was. First, RT had another huge limitation, hardware. RT could only run on mobile processors called ARM. Windows 10 S, on the other hand, might eventually use ARM processors at some point in the future, but for now, it uses regular PC components like your CPUs from Intel, for example. Because it is essentially just regular Windows with a big imaginary switch that artificially limits itself to the store. And that's a very important difference, because it means that if users don't like the restrictions of 10 S, they can simply flip the switch and upgrade to regular Windows, often even for free. Having PC components also means that, unlike ARM, RT, performance won't actually be a bottleneck either. And while we are at hardware, RT was also limited to only running on a few tablet devices like the first and second generation Surface as well as a Nokia tablet. Those devices were a pretty tough value proposition even without the limitations of RT as people weren't too comfortable with the marriage of Windows on tablets just yet. Windows 10 S, on the other hand, will run on a whole range of different devices, like on Microsoft's most traditional Surface device yet, the Surface Laptop, but also on cheaper devices from manufacturers like HP and Acer. There will be devices at multiple price points and with various form factors, and that alone is already a huge win for 10 S. Other than the much improved hardware, Windows 10 S also does a lot better in terms of software. Remember, RT ran on the Windows 8 interface. Windows 8, with its colorful start screen, charms bar, and full screen apps that couldn't be windowed was confusing enough to regular users even without the limitations of RT. Windows 10 S, on the other hand, is based on the much more warmly received Windows 10, so most people at least won't hate the UI. And then there are the apps, of course. And I know any proper enthusiast will tell you that the Windows Store is still a joke and, you know, they aren't completely wrong, but compared to the days of RT and the difference is, again, enormous. RT had way fewer apps and they were of way lower quality than those available on 10S. Why? Because all apps for RT had to be written from the ground up for the Windows Store. And the audience just wasn't big enough to get a lot of developers interested. Windows 10, on the other hand, already has over 500 million users, which is way more than RT ever had. And developers don't actually have to start from scratch this time around. Microsoft lets third-party developers bring their existing desktop programs to the Windows Store with a tool called Project Centennial, which basically puts existing programs into a special container and then makes them available on the store. And sure, it's not as simple as pushing a button, but Project Centennial still means that the existing complex legacy desktop applications could run on 10s without any significant modifications. And they do. I mean, some of them do. Slack, probably the world's most popular messaging app for companies, is a desktop program that is in the store. Kodi, a wildly popular online video streaming platform, is in the store. Full desktop Microsoft Office, as well as the desktop Spotify and iTunes programs, are all coming to the store. I mean, eventually. But damn, iTunes is about as legacy as it gets. Now, the area where I, and I'm sure also Microsoft, expected a lot more development is that of the so-called universal Windows apps, which are not just repackaged desktop programs, but modern apps that are written specifically for the Windows 10 platform. Sadly for Microsoft, the number and quality of these apps is still far from ideal, but I would argue that even so, it is way better than what was available in the days of RT. There are a few big third-party apps like Twitter, Viber, Dropbox, TeamViewer, and Duolingo, which all work quite well. There's a bunch of random indie stuff, and Microsoft has one by one converted most of their first-party apps to become universal Windows apps. And given how often people actually use first-party apps, I think these are the most important, 
yet also most underrated improvements over previous platforms. The built-in video and music players, the photo viewer and editor, the voice recorder, the mail and calendar apps, or even Skype are reliable and pretty enjoyable. For light users, these core apps should cover the basics quite well, which was not at all the case with RT. So that's the app situation, and look, I'm not gonna try to convince enthusiasts, gamers, or content creators that they should switch to Windows 10 S, and for now, maybe not even the average Joe, but I think I've proven one thing quite clearly. Windows 10 S sucks less than RT did. Like, a lot less. In fact, it's like 10 S is RT without most of the downsides. It will run on all sorts of hardware, it won't be limited by the power of mobile processors, it is based on the popular Windows 10 interface, which is what people expect from a modern PC, unlike RT, it can actually run both modern apps and desktop programs, and it lets users who still don't like the experience switch to regular Windows at any time. So this relationship is pretty clear, but I can already hear you typing that this relationship is also true, because sucking less than RT isn't a very high bar to pass, and Windows 10 S is still more limited than full Windows, so nobody will ever choose it. And I hear you, but again, I don't really agree, because Windows 10 S does actually have some benefits over regular Windows too. First, it's actually safer. All apps in the Windows Store are scanned by Microsoft for malware, and users can't just accidentally click on a rogue link to download something nasty from a malicious website. Just like smartphone apps, apps on Windows 10 S also run in their own confined environments, meaning that even if they are somehow malicious, they can't just access the rest of the system at will. Second, all store apps actually hand off most of the annoying tasks to Windows instead of having to do it themselves. Installation happens with a click instead of requiring a separate installer program to be downloaded. App updates are handled automatically by the store, instead of 15 separate updaters having to run in the background for all of your programs at all times draining your resources. And uninstalling apps happens with a single click as well instead of having to use a crappy wizard again. The whole thing is just cleaner and uses fewer resources. And indeed, Microsoft also mentions performance and battery life gains from letting the system intelligently manage these things instead of handing everything to the programs themselves. Now, if none of these benefits seem interesting to you at all, then I don't blame you. In fact, if you're watching tech videos on YouTube, you're probably techy enough to want an app that isn't on the store, and you're probably knowledgeable enough to not download crapware from the internet. So you're just not the target audience of this OS. But I can think of two types of consumers who certainly are. First, users that need to be controlled by some organization, and Microsoft's original target audience for Windows 10 S instantly comes to mind here, which is kids in schools that use education devices that are managed by the schools. Manageability, security, and cost are the top requirements of schools, and 10 S does quite well in those areas. Better than Chrome OS? Well, I don't know, but it sure beats regular Windows. Second, any casual users who don't know a lot about technology, and I think most geeks really undervalue just how many people fall into this category. I actually instantly thought of my grandma when I heard about Windows 10 S. She is 77, she's pretty cool, she uses a Windows 10 PC every day, and here's a list of things that she does on it. She Skypes with us every day, she gets a ton of chain emails sent to her from her friends that contain things like slideshows of some pretty places, which she watches and then forwards to her own friends. And she searches for things like recipes on the web. And that's it. And even so, she managed to install a weird antivirus program I've never heard of, a browser toolbar, and who knows how much malware. And when I ask her why she installed these things, she says she didn't. She just clicked on some boxes. With Windows 10 S, I could give her a computer that would work and feel exactly like the one she uses now, but without the ability to install crapware from those lovely chain mails and the weird pop-up windows. It would be perfect. So for these two groups of users, which is non-tacky people and people managed by organizations, sometimes Windows 10 S already makes more sense than regular Windows. And I think as we see more and more apps coming to the Windows Store, it will also make more and more sense for the average Joe as well. 
And while all of that is fine and dandy, there is one thing about Windows 10s that I just don't get. Edge and Bing are set as defaults and they can't be replaced. Like seriously, what is Microsoft doing? This is just user hostile and stupid. Windows 10s is currently handicapped enough even without these ridiculous limitations, so giving it another artificial handicap won't really help with the uphill battle it has to fight. Of course, most Windows 10s users will probably be fine with Edge, as it has lately become a pretty okay browser, and you can maybe make the, by the way, very weak argument that making Edge the default is safer and more efficient than letting users pick their own browser, but mandatory Bing? That's just like next level greedy and nobody asked for that. Bing doesn't make anything safer or more manageable and it objectively doesn't perform as well as the competition. So I really, really hope that Microsoft will wake up and get rid of it. But anyway, to wrap it up, I'd like to know what apps you would be missing if you switched to Windows 10 S. For me, it would be the full desktop Microsoft Office Suite, as well as Spotify, both of which were confirmed to come to the Windows Store, as well as Adobe Creative Cloud apps, which I used to create these videos, and my favorite browser, which is Firefox. Those two were sadly not confirmed. Other than that, though, I am pretty much covered. Let me know your list in the comment section below or tweet it at me at TechAltar. If you want to see more from the Story Behind series, where I take a deeper look at the latest trends shaping the tech industry, then the past episodes can be found somewhere here. Future episodes will come straight into your inbox if you hit that subscribe button, and especially if you hit the bell button for notifications. I'm also on social media channels. I'm tech out pretty much everywhere. Check it out, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.